Hey, Netrunners! We are here again with round two of the Netrunner tournament that occurred at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York on Sunday, May the 4th. Stupid holiday, but you know what? I kind of want to watch Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so here we go into round two. What is going to happen in this round two? Well, uh, you know, if you didn't watch round one, where I split uh, with the corpse winning, uh, um, you would not know that this is the first tournament that we had since the release of Honor and Profit, so things really got mixed up. Um, there's also sort of a big gap um, between the previous tournament and this one, at least for me. I don't know for anyone else. So, you know, uh, I was a little... You know, I hadn't changed my decks. I haven't even put in a single. I don't think I have a single Honor and Profit card. It's the same two decks you've always seen uh, me playing for the past few months. I mean, they, they keep working, so why why stop using them, right? Um, you know, I gotta, other people have to prove that these things, these decks don't work anymore uh, to force me to, to change them in some way, right? You know, it's like you, you polish something, you polish it, you polish it, you polish it. It's really, really shiny. If it doesn't get scratched... You don't need to polish it anymore. <laughs> um, you know, but that the same thing, you know, is the opposite, right? There's a lot of people who, you know, they don't, they don't polish, right? It's like that's that's how you get a deck that's that's so strong that, you know, no, it's a living card game, right? That's what it's all about. Is you know, your your decks aren't supposed to just <laughs> work forever, and you never need to buy any new cards. <laughs> Or, or you learn any new cards, right? It's you know you have to keep adapting to the game as it changes, which is which is uh, why I can keep playing it for you know over a year now, um, you know as opposed to other games where it's like well I've figured out everything there is to this game, so there's no reason to you know if I play Settlers again, it's like well it's the same as the last time. But Netrunner keeps changing every few weeks. So you gotta, you, know, you gotta keep polishing, but don't polish if you don't have to. Okay, here we go. Wizard, one of my arch enemies, the wizard. You know, you might be thinking wizard is so weak, right? No one plays wizard, but actually, he's like one of the two <laughs> identities that really screws me over <laughs> with my particular taxing strategy. Um, see, and this is why. Watch this. Goodbye, Sand Sand, for two credits. Oh, that's so brutal, right? My whole deck is all about taxing the runner, and the two ways in which it taxes the runner is by tracing them, right? Um, you know, so if people play Link, my deck falls apart pretty hard. Uh, and two, by making them trash things that are expensive, right? So, like, I put down that Jackson Howard, <laughs> and I can't protect it right now, really. So what's going to happen? He's going to run... And trash Jackson Howard for zero credits, which is ah, uh, that's just so hard and so painful. Uh, my draw isn't looking too hot either. I could use some more ice, right? Because that's the weakness of the wizard is that it's it's going to be hard for him to get into servers if I can keep him out. Um, but my my deck doesn't try to keep people out. It tries to let you in and but make it really expensive. Um, See, he's letting me have all the money in the world. Look at all the money I have. Well, I drew transactions. Okay, so he's going to run. And I'm going to use the Jackson to, you know, the, part of the reason I played those transactions, even though I didn't need the money, was to just, you know, since I'm going to be forced to use the Jackson, right? Because it's not going to tax him to trash it, right? Uh, I might as well put some cards in the trash to Jackson with, right? I'm not going to use a Jackson for just, I think there was like one sweep sweep in there. That's not worth it, right? Uh, using a Jackson for a few transactions is, is a better deal. Uh, I don't know why he didn't run R&D, then run the Jackson, right? Uh, and then possibly run R&D again to see another new card with the pop-up window, right? I mean, sure, I get money and he loses two money. Him losing the two money might be a big deal. But me gaining the money, looking at how much I have, is not really going to change the situation. Um, so that was a Caduceus. And... Uh, I see how much money he has. He lets me have the Caduceus money. 
Is he going to pay to not end the run? I think it's Trace. I did one credit, uh, one of my recurring credits on each Trace. So it was a Trace 4 for money, which he let me have, and a Trace 3 to end the run, um, which he also let me have. He's running R&D, and that's an Astro script. Well, that's just great. <laughs> that's just great. Thanks, Papa Window. It's Netrunner. It's a card game. It happens. And Joshua B., you don't see that too often, but I'm like, I'm not worried. I have tag punishment. I got closed accounts. I got, I'm, yeah, get tagged. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to defend R&D here, you know, in case he gets to uh, see Joshua B, and I'm thinking, like, he's going to do a medium play, right? So it's, and take the extra click, see a shit ton of cards in the pop-up window. So put up a little heavier defense in R&D, start working on a remote. Right? I'm not going to be able to rely on upgrades and such against Wizard, right? I have to rely on my ice to stop him, right? So the Kadoosh is actually pretty strong because that hits him in the wallet where he's weak. Except he's got two Armitages, so maybe we can Breaking News kill some of those. Um, is that what I'm going to try to do? I have a Breaking News. I'm going to draw a card. Maybe I'm not feeling good with that Breaking No, no. I think I put the Breaking News there. Oh, I put the Breaking News on top of an upgrade. Maybe that's an Ash. I put it on top of? Am I doing Ash RSVP? RSVP would actually hurt the wizard a lot because um, that is something which can... Oh, he's got a Knigget. Uh, uh, he puts the Knigget out and runs. Am I going to res? Okay, it's a quandary, but at least I'll make him spend two credits, his last two credits, um, on beating the quandary, which he does. Uh, he takes the breaking news. What's the other card? It's a Sansan. -San. Oh, it wasn't an Ash. Oh, if that was an Ash, it would have been so much better. Ash RSVP would have been great there. Uh, he still would have connigated it, but he could not have beaten the Ash Trace. He would have used Wizard Credits to trash Ash. Then he would have to run again, but he wouldn't have had the two credits. Okay, so since he stole the breaking news and did not take the Sansan, -San, I will score my Astro Script off the Sansan. -San. But look, all that money I had, I'm down to just five now. Um, let's hope I can res the ice in R&D <laughs> if he tries to go there and he's got Armitage money and so he's back in business you know people people crap on Armitage but look you know it's it's if you think about it right if your money making cards are things like Dirty Laundry Sure Gamble right oh he's Joshua being right away wow Okay. Um, all right. And then you basically need to keep your... Oh, and, and at Masanori. Oh, I guess if he's going to tag hell, he's going to tag hell, right? Move. Ignite. And... Oh, planned assault. Wait a minute. Planned assault is a double... So he, he, Joshua B to get a click, installed Masanori, moved the knight, took some off Armitage, and then, yeah, I guess, yeah, okay. Plan to solve the count, Siphon. Yep. That's just brutal, right? He can basically put one account siphon in the deck for four influence, and then put, instead of putting two more account siphons, put in three planned assaults for six, letting him siphon whenever he wants. And I guess, right? So here's the thing. He's going to tag hell with Joshua B. He's going to even more tag hell with Masanori. He's going to even more tag hell with account siphon. Full in tag hell. I can tag, I can trash all this stuff, but I have five credits. And he's account siphoning, and I have nowhere to dump the credits, so because the trace is on. Oh no! Is maybe one of the Caduceus traces is happening? Um. Oh, he let the get three credits. Okay, so the trace that he let happen was the first one, which is the get three credits trace. So I used all my money on that trace to boost it. Basically, to dump my five away, but the five became three, right? That's that's the best I could do. So he ended up getting six and two tags. Okay, but here's my problem. 
He still siphoned me. I can't trash any of his stuff. I can't take advantage of the fact that he's tagged right now. I don't have a closed accounts. If I, you know, if I had three credits, I could be I, oh, do I have a closed accounts? I don't see one in my hand. I wish I had one. Um, you know, I don't have, I could have taken two credits trash Armitage, but that's not helping anything, right? The best I can do is replace the ice with the knight to get rid of the knight. Okay, but I still can't res that. I hope it's a pop-up window and take take two credits. Okay, maybe I can res it now. Maybe it's a quandary <laughs> or uh, or an ice wall or something or wrap around. Maybe it's a wrap around. Yeah, that's that's the best I can do for now. Right, next turn I can I can maybe trash Joshua B or, or something. Okay, so he's running R and D. I can't res that. Pop-up window happens. It's a hedge fund. Okay. That's what I was saying before, right? If you're if your economy, uh oh, daily loop reversal, because he successfully ran R and D, he can install daily loop reversal, and he has he used Joshua B. So he's milling three cards. Doom doom doom. I think, what if I remember correctly, those that those three mills he milled two agendas, one of which is NAPD, right? So if he runs archives, he's gonna win. So what are my options here? I have to. You know, I don't have a. I need a Jackson Howard to rescue those agendas. I have no choice. I could have trashed that data lake reversal, but it it didn't matter because it just run archives and score. Or I can get an ice that I can res and protect archives with, right? To prevent him from getting the four points long enough to go find a Jackson Howard. That's another option. But I didn't draw any such card. The best card I drew was that RSVP, which I have three credits to use, right? So. Um, the RSVP should prevent him from stealing the NAPD. The problem is, right, it's his turn again. And, sure, if he runs archives, he'll steal the two points. He can't steal the NAPD because I'll res an RSVP. But he's going to mill four cards with the daily reversal and run archives. And I res my RSVP, but it doesn't even matter because in the four mills... There's another, yep, there's more agendas. Game over. Ugh. Ugh, that's so ridiculously painful, right? The account siphon, and then no hesitation, no, like, if you give me one second to, like, rest there, right? One click difference, right? If I drew a Jackson Howard, if I had an, any end the run ice, which I, my deck is full of, right? Just another quandary, another, an ice wall, wrap around, anything, right? I would have been able to shut down his whole machine, right? He was buried in so many tags, he couldn't remove them. Um, you know, uh, he couldn't really break any ice at all, right? Uh, so I would have been able to trash all of his machinery, right? That daily reversal, gone. Masonori, gone. Closed accounts, you know, Armitage's, trash, trash, trash. All his board full of resources and a board full of tags, right? But because he didn't hesitate, he just account siphoned, right? And then immediately goes for the milling before I have a chance to do any sort of protecting whatsoever, right? Very early in the game, before I was even able to get my regular game plan going, right? No, no room for me to breathe whatsoever. Uh, and I think that's the way you have to do that, right? You can't sit around and like set it up for a long time. It's like you just need to, to bring it out and hit with it super fast. That's the only way that that thing is going to work. Um, but isn't it really cool to see that work? Let me tell you something. When it happens to you, it's really not cool to see that work. It's so demoralizing. You have absolutely... There's nothing you can do. You're account siphoned, so you can't trash any resources. What are you playing, freelancer? I didn't think so, right? So, yeah, you can trash my resources. If you spend your whole turn, you can trash one. And I've got, like, five of them. And you want to trash all of them, right? And, you know, combined with, you know, the element of luck there, right? The... The happens on the three mills to get the two agendas, forcing me to do a different play there. Right, the, the desperation play, right? If he only mills one agenda there, um, you know, I trash that daily leak reversal, right? But because there was a game-winning amount of points in archives from just the first three mills, um, I can't, I have to do something besides trashing the daily leak reversal. I need a Jackson Howard. And losing that one early actually ended up being a bigger deal than I thought, but that's... That's wizard, right? Going well with that strategy, right? Preventing the Jackson Howard, which is the counter to the daily league reversal, right? Okay, so let's see, <laughs> let's see if this runner game goes in a direction that is that is less painful. 
uh, and hopefully more interesting. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oof. Uh, no. <laughs> Don't let that happen to you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, man. Maybe the thing to do if you see Wizard is to just, you know, I played that Jackson Howard early because I wanted to draw up, but just if you have Jackson Howard, don't don't play him. <laughs> don't play him until you can protect him, right? Because the weakness of that deck is that it has a hard time actually getting through and the run ice, which my deck has a lot of, right? He couldn't really, you know, he had to use that knight to run through the Caduceus, right? It was only worth it for him to do it because he had a Count Siphon. I think the other lesson to learn there, right? And I've learned this also with some criminal decks recently I've been playing. Planned Assault is ridiculously good. Planned Assault is so good, right? It's like, you look, it's, a, it's like, no, 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 no. Like, that might be the new card, right? So first of all, right, let's say you're a Shaper. Okay, I'll splash some Planned Assaults. Yeah, okay, used to be, you know, turn one. They might medium you. No, it's like, no, turn one, they're going to indexing you if you don't protect R&D. Oh, and if you don't protect HQ on turn one, yeah, they're going to account side, right? It's, it's, a criminal has six account sevens in their deck. Uh, you know, a shaper could have, you know, mo many more than three indexings, effectively speaking, right? Someone like Wizard can now make a much better uh, account siphon recursion deck because they basically save two influence, right? Instead of having three account siphons or 12 influence, they have four account siphons in the form of one account siphon and, you know, three um, uh, planned assaults, right? Okay, so as soon as he plays that... So let's talk about this game now. <laughs> um, right? So as soon as he plays that, uh, that uh, subliminal messaging, right, I, re re you know, I'm pretty sure this is a Red Coats deck, right? Pretty sure. So knowing that, my immediate play, you know, I have a strategy. The strategy to beat the Red Coats deck, which if you don't know, is a deck that's all about getting tons of money, putting out big, big, big ice that can't be broken through, and then scoring agendas and remotes normally. No fast advance, no tricks, no nothing. Just put out big, big, big ice uh, and get tons of money with all the assets that can't be trashed. So since I don't have a shit ton of money in this deck, I can't really trash all the assets, right? I've resigned myself to that. My goal is simply to make him spend a crap ton of money, rezzing all the ice, destroy them with Parasite, and I'm going to deal with the very large strength of the ice um, by getting that early, early data sucker. So that's why I started hammering right away, because I'm like, I need to fill up this data suckers so quickly before he can res these big ice. And look at that. Turn one, I try to nail R&D, and he spends all his money, almost all his money, no, he spent all his money. See, another data sucker, right? I'm like, I need to get two of these things going. Oh, Caduceus, it's so bad. Oh, oh it's so painful. Um, I need to get, you know, I'm getting two data suckers. I'm going to load them up as quickly as possible. So that way, big ice aren't so big and scary. And I can parasite them. So he spends, you know, it's like I can't make him lose money by trashing his assets. But I can make him lose money by, um, see, I can't trash that Adonis. I can make him lose money by making running into a big ice that's like a bioroid, not getting hurt by it, then parasiting it off the face of the earth, right? And then still get more accesses after parasiting, and so on. That's my game plan. Um, my game plan hurt, you saw, when I took the brain damage on that, that Heimdall that he rezzed way, way, way before I expected to see any Heimdalls. <laughs> um... So yeah, great. I'm also hoping to get a ton of money on this Katie Jones, um, and you know I could maybe use that to install my Fem straight up, or um, you know with my Inti right, which requires a ton of money, right? Uh, okay, so the Sharpshooter that should help me if I see an Ichi at some point, and the Deus X also can help me, on, you know, single runs into the remote, right? Um, that's what those are for, because it's like a lot of the big Bioroid expensive ice are AP or destroyers. So 
um, by using my sharpshooter and my Deus Ex clone chips test runs, I should be able to like run into that remote, um, you know, with these whenever there's an agenda in there for like a one shot run. Okay, so he sees what I've been trying to do, right? He knows that my pile of data suckers would be a nice counter to his giant ice. He ices up the archives early there. So I'm drawn, trying to find something, I don't know, maybe Parasite, right? I don't have the Parasite early here, which is what I was really looking for, right? Uh, if I get an early Parasite, I can clear off HQ or R&D. Oh, I guess I have an SMC. I could use that. Um, you know, I'll start loading up my data suckers. Um, running archives, it's like that could be... Oh, he's, he's clearing, right? Look at that. You can play... Self-modifying code and clear. And look how much money he has. Ugh. Just from what? Like an Adonis campaign and some subliminal messagings and, and taking credits. Right? He's just getting mega, mega rich. Um, oh, that's the other thing. I can't play my SMC right now because I don't have my Grimoire. But I don't really want to lose my sharpshooter either. Okay, so I'm going to run the archives. There's an Eli. All right. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, see, I realized I don't have the memory. Alright, goodbye, sharpshooter. I'll just play the SMC, but... What am I going to get with the SMC? It's... it's. You know, what am I going to get with that? There's, there's... I don't have the data suckers to get a parasite with it. I mean, I guess I could just, like, turn it into a parasite and then wait for the parasite to work, but he's taking it so slow, and he's perfectly willing to clear virus counters. Okay, so now he's putting an upgrade in there. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's an ash. The fact that that's an ash really, really, really hurts me, right? Because the way for me to deal with ash, since I don't have too much money, is to use my, you know, like, one-shot run into the server with a stim hack or the sharpshooters or, or a deus ex, right, and score. If there's an ash there, that means I have to do all that, pay three, then do it all again in the same turn. I don't think I'm capable of doing that. I wanted to install my inti. I couldn't. I'm drawing all these cards, and I guess I'm not drawing the one I want, so... Throw out this infiltration I don't need. The brain damage is also hurting me a little bit. Uh, only four cards in my hand. Instead of five, slowing down my draw a little bit. I also don't have any card draw in my deck because I usually don't need it. <laughs> right? It's like, look, the stuff that I've drawn already is usually enough to beat anyone who's, you know, most people are resing not big nasty ice like Heimdall right away. I was like a, you know, the turn or two too slow to, to get rid of that Caduceus there. Okay, so I'll empty Katie, and I have more money than than anything, but that would be great, but my deck doesn't work by... Just gonna, see, look, I'm throwing out the sharpshooter, and then I throw out the SMC. All right, so now I'm going to fem. <laughs> look, all that money just disappeared. Oh, my God. I Katie'd so long, and all the money's gone, right? I run RD once. Oh, all the money's gone. I see one lousy card. At least I get some data suckers, but I got points. It's a miracle. <laughs> All right, so I fem to Heimdall. That's that should help me, right? Right? Uh, what am I doing? Oh, okay. So I'm using the 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 data suckers in combination with the fem to get through the caduceus uh, relatively inexpensively, right? I'm letting him have the three credits because he already has more money than God. And I'm just spending, so I'm, it's more important for me to save the one credit for breaking the subroutine than it is uh, for him to get the three, because he already has 5, 10, 15, 20, something. So. And he's raising another Adonis campaign. I don't know what he thinks he needs even more money for. But I guess if you think about it, you know, at 5, 10, 15, 19, 24 credits, right? Okay, so he reses what? Two big Heimdalls, right? Something like that. Um, so, you know, even though it's a zillion credits, it's actually not enough to res all of those gigantic ice, 
right? They're that big. They're that expensive. But look, now he installs two ice. And he's got enough money probably to res both of them, no matter what ice they are, unless they're two Genesis. All right, so I'm going to run and click four. I was pretty sure I knew what ice that was going to be, but I was wrong. <laughs> uh, so now I think I'm going to take more brain damage, right? I sort of have this bad habit of if I access HQ or R&D and I see some ice, then... I expect those ice to be the ones to get installed. And you know what? 99% of the time, that's exactly what happens. Right? I run, and the ice that I just saw in R&D or HQ is the ice that was just installed. People get an ice, and they put it down. In this case, that is not what happened. Um, okay, and that's three brain damage, and... Four brain damage. Okay. <laughs> this is bad. Um, but, you know, part of the reason I was doing that was to force him to spend that huge pile of money. And I, I kind of did. He's now down to eight. But look, I can't get in. And he cleared virus counters. Ugh. Even though I only had three virus counters, he still cleared them. Right? Just to just really put me down in the dirt. Four brain damage. No data suckers, one fam, all I have is money from Katie Jones, and now I have a Deus Ex. I wish I would have had that earlier. <laughs> like, if I would have installed that a turn earlier, I wouldn't have taken those brain damages. But now my card draw is really, really slow, right? Assuming I don't want to throw things out. I don't even know what I would get, right? If I, if I could tutor any card in my deck, what would I get? <laughs> And he's just taking his zillion dollars now. Restructure, hedge fund, and... All right, it's installing even more ice. So, you know, I'm pretty much screwed right here, <laughs> if you didn't notice, right? I pretty much have no chance. He's taken enough money to res his remote, use his ash. Um, there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, but for some reason, he seems to still feel insecure, and he keeps re taking even more money... I mean, only re taking enough money to res the ice on the remote, that's enough, right? Installing another ice in R&D, like, what, what is that getting him? You know, it's already, with just the two Heimdalls, it's basically invincible, right? How am I supposed to get through that? I guess with the Deus Ex and three credits, I can get through once. Um, I can't get through it again, ever. How am I going to get through it again? In what conceivable situation, right? I get, you know, playing against some random opponent, um, you know, you wouldn't know every card in their deck, but I play against Tom a lot. He knows the cards I have in this deck. Uh, you know, there's no way I can get into R&D. With, with the Deus Ex, I can get through once and see one card. What are the odds I'm going to see an agenda that's worth five points on that one run. <laughs> I can't index. <laughs> I don't have a maker's eye. Um, you know, the third ice in R&D doesn't, it doesn't get him anything, right? And look, now a third ice on the remote. It's like, I can't get in. with, with Whatever ice you had, I can't get in. I can force you to trash Jackson. That's the best I can do. Oh, he's going to use it. Okay. But it's like, I can't get into pretty much any server. <laughs> I guess I can get into... Um, HQ, right? Because I have a fem, so I could click away that. He I could spend my whole turn to click away that Heimdall, um, and then use my fem to break the Caduceus for three credits, and or Data Sucker in a credit, and let him get the money, and access HQ for one card. So HQ is actually a server and ar ar archives I can get into with two clicks. Um, you know, I guess if I get a clone ship, I can bring out my Inti. And then going into archives would not profit me on data suckers because it would cost three data suckers and a credit um, to get in, and I'd only get two back. Going into HQ would profit me one data sucker, but it would cost three clicks to break the Heimdall, right? I can't really take a fifth brain damage, so my can size would be zero. <laughs> 
Uh, I wouldn't lose the game, though, but it would still... <laughs> I've already taken too many, right? Too early. All right, so... I'm going to dirty laundry. I think I'm dirty laundrying the archives. Or HQ. Archives, I think, right? Or did I not even do it? Did I not do it? How come I didn't see the card that's in the archives when I did it? I don't know what ha why I didn't see that card. I don't know what happened, but um, whatever. Okay, clone ship. Cool. I still don't have her... Not having my grimoire is hurting me, right? Because I feel like I need the two data suckers to be able to beat the large strength of the ice if, if he lets me fill them up again. <laughs> Uh, if I have any chance, right? Yeah, as an EVE campaign, I can't ever possibly hope to trash. Um, you know. But it's like I can't get my Inti right now because I don't have memory. And I want to keep my Deus Ex in case I faceplant another <laughs> Heimdall. <laughs> I really shouldn't have ran. I mean, I wouldn't have had the brain damage if I would have face-checked those earlier in the turns that I face-checked them. All right, there's an agenda I can't possibly steal with an, because there's an ash under it. So pretty much any ice you could conceivably put in front of them would keep me out, no matter what they are. Any ice in a red coat deck, at least. But uh, so you know, but I'm hoping I can force them to spend the huge pile of money. You know, just force them to res. Don't, can't score, but force them to res. Um, all right, I'm gonna empty Katie. That way, at least if I get in, right, uh, the ash trace might be beatable. And there's a toll booth, so that's going to keep me out. The end. Right? It, why, why even? Right? It's like that's the only ice you need there is the toll booth. You don't need the other ones. <laughs> Maybe I get a scavenge onto the toll booth? All right, score your agenda. Oh, that's a priority wreck. Great. And another Heimdall. So, yeah, it, it, dude, it's like, you know, it's totally working, right? I'm getting crushed. But at the same time, I think he's been a little overprotective, right? He could have just scored much earlier. Right, he was he was in no danger of me getting in. I was locked the hell out. Oh, so he's throwing out these next bronzes, right? The weak ice, the ones that I can actually deal with, <laughs> probably pretty easily, right? Um, no point, in, you know. He thinks I guess there's no point in spending money on those. Just use the big ones, <laughs> right? It's like, why are you restructuring? You have three pretty much invincible servers. Why are you restructuring again? Why? Why? Just draw your agendas and put them in the remote and score them. I can't get in there. I cannot get in there. Why are you putting down another Eve or Adonis campaign? Uh, it's just making it more slow and painful. You have 24 credits. I guess I can get into HQ once a turn. That's all I can do. What am I doing? Oh, I'm test running something. Test running a parasite. Okay. Yeah, he didn't clear the virus counters. I managed to get a few. I had to throw away my Deus Ex in order to install the parasite, because I don't have a grimoire yet, so I didn't have memory for that. Last gasp. Okay. Running HQ. Using all my data suckers to destroy... That ice. Goodbye. Now there's a caduceus. I should use three credits to uh, let him have money and break the end of the run subroutine. Yep. That's the right move. Get two data suckers and I actually get an HQ access. Randomize that. Come on, lucky dice. Two. It's a Jackson Howard. Trash it. All right. So that, you know. That's the best I can do, right? Is is slow him down, prevent him from drawing up those agendas, 
Okay, clone chip the parasite for one. HQ is the only server here that I had any chance of doing anything about. So that's what I'm gonna do. And run. Oh. Nope. Nope. Oh, okay, so I'm just running each instead of using the, the parasite, uh, I'm just running HQ again. And no. Let's set it Victor 2. Now I'm clone chipping the parasite. Oh, okay, because I didn't have enough data suckers to kill the Caduceus off. Right? So I had to run HQ once more to get them. Okay. Well, at least <laughs> the one server that I had a chance to do something about, I did. And now I saw those big nasty ice, like the toll booth, and a Victor 2, and whatever. So he just has to install those in HQ, and that's it. It, it doesn't really matter after that. Uh, it's going to be, you know, I'll run HQ and make him res those ice, and that'll be that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so at this point, right, um, you should just power draw, install agendas, and score them. Right? I'm going to run HQ just to keep him honest, make him res the ice, make him spend some amount of money on them. It's a Victor 2. I'll double click it. Yeah, I got to think about this, right? It's, it's, um, you know, I don't want to let him run the trace on the Victor 2 because I've already got four brain damage. If it was earlier in the game, I might. Um, you know, but he also has a zillion dollars. So I'll double click it and end the run. All right, looks like he found another agenda. He's going to score. Cool. Okay, so just so people know, right, after this game, I mean, you can already tell where this is going, right? This is this is a sort of a foregone conclusion here. Um, people said, hey, wh how did you lose to this? You, your deck is, you know, the Atman deck is the ultimate counter to, to the Redcoats Giant Ice deck. And I'm like, no, the ultimate, wouldn't the ultimate counter be to have Magnum Opus and also... Um, you know, I, you know, a corset deck basically. Magnum Opus plus uh, cards, icebreakers that work based on money, right? That way, no matter how big the ice are, you just sit there with your full suite and take eight, take eight, take eight, take eight. He's playing very, very slowly, right? Um, you know, he's all he can't fast advance. He has to install every ice, uh, every agenda into the remote server. You wait as soon as he he can't fast advance, so. When he installs a card in the remote and advances it, right? Because he's going to have to leave an advance, every agenda advanced and on the table, right? You don't even need to run centrals, ever. You just sit there, and as soon as there's an advanced card in the remote, you run the remote with your giant pile of Magnum Opus money and your three, uh, your Gordian Blade, your Corroder Snowball, and your um, Century Breaker of choice. And you break everything and you take the agenda. And since you have Magnum Opus, you can also perhaps trash his assets that are over there unprotected. And you don't even need to run centrals, and you probably shouldn't. That's the way to beat this deck. It's a core set deck. It's really basic. Uh, and I'm like, how is my deck the counter to that? Right? Uh, I just got, I'm getting crushed here. The solution that I did not think of, right? Because I'm so parasite focused. Okay, finally got my grimoire. Yeah. Uh, I'm so focused on parasite, unlike other people who play, you know, Kate. Um that right and and i was sort of you know it's, it's not a bad idea thinking make him res big eyes then those big eyes completely disappear because parasite and that that's just great right that's that's huge um but this deck just look it has too much money it has and my deck you know the idea of my deck is i don't have a lot of money i just have lots of things that are inexpensive the problem is it doesn't matter how inexpensive my stuff is if the corpse stuff is expensive Right? It's expensive to trash Eve campaign. It's expensive to pay three for toll booth. It's expen right? So you no know, matter what deck you have in Netrunner, you need a lot of money. Um, you know, it's you can't play the low economy, everything's cheap dollar store deck in Netrunner uh, as a runner. 
right? You need to be able to deal with a corp that makes everything expensive. Um, you know, even though if you have an inexpensive way of dealing with big expensive ice, there are other things that are expensive, like trashing, right? So you maybe need imp, right? If you have imp and parasite, then, then maybe you can get away without spending a lot of money. Um, but, you know, NAPD contract is out there now. You know how many times I run an NAPD and I don't have four credits, even though I know better, but I have no choice. I have to run anyway and hope it's not an NAPD, right? Because I don't have the four credits. Anyway, uh, and look, even when I have this ton of money from Katie Jones, it doesn't matter because I don't have icebreakers that work on money. Only a femme. Uh, and Inti's. <laughs> Inti doesn't work on money. Inti works on data suckers and then one credit to break subroutine. You don't pay two to pump Inti <laughs> by one strength. You just don't do that. See, why is he protecting R&D even more? It's an invincible server. All right, so, all right. So the original thing. So how is my deck... Plus he has the freaking... Project Wotan, how can I get in anywhere? Uh, the way for my deck to beat his deck, according to people, is something so simple that I didn't don't think of, again, because I play Parasite, is to make a giant Atman. Atman, right? Everyone else who plays Kate plays Atman primarily. Atman is the thing, and then they have like one of Parasite, whatever. I'm playing Parasite, and Atman is like, oh, in an emergency, I can use my Atman. Right? If there's like chimeras everywhere, I'll make a strength zero Atman, right? If it's Jinteki, I'll make a strength zero Atman, just in case to deal with, you know, any sort of weird ice that come up, right? Uh, so I can break them and then parasite them later. You know, mostly... All right, there we go. Game over, finally. Oof, mercy, mercy. Uh, but yeah, people say if you make a big Atman, then like say strength five or six... Suddenly, all of these ice become a lot less scary. You only need like a couple data suckers and a few credits to break them, and not like a mountain of credits. And it's like, oh, you know, that, you know, and it's like I had plenty of money with Katie Jones to break subroutines. If I was only paying for one for one per subroutine, I could I could get in there, right? It, you know, I just need to get in, you know, fill in a few data suckers, right? I mean, what? The, you know, I'd still have to pay the toll booth fee, but it's like I got parasite just the toll booths. Um, you know, it's like, th yeah, that, that, that might have, that might work, right? That just might work. Um, you know, if you can't, you know, if you're up against this deck, the counter to which is a boring core set deck with magnum opus and normal breakers, and you're not playing that because that's not going to work against any other deck you're going to play against. Um, you know, if you're playing this deck, you know, a Kate deck, Maybe the solution is, you know, fill your data suckers early, like I was doing, but then install a big Atman, five or six. Use those data suckers to get in to the server that is all these giant ice, right? Maybe parasite away just the small ice or just the toll booths. Um, don't face plant and take brain damage early also. That, that could help. Um, that, you know, I haven't tried it yet. I need to, to get some play testing in against... Um, some red coats, because you know that's going to be popular. It's still popular, you know. It, it's it's easy and straightforward to play. You can clearly see that it works if your opponent doesn't know what to do. Um, it's fun to have giant pile of money. It's fun to have a giant, big, big, big ice. Um, you know, I just worry, you know, the the how effective it can be. You know. It's like I knew what it was, but I didn't fully understand how to deal with it in the game. I had actually not played against it before. I'd only seen it, you know, the deck list on the internet and wondered, how does that actually work, right? Well, you've just seen how it works, but I think, you know, no. after after this game, I don't think Redcoats is going to be successful against any opponent who, you know, who, who uh, grocks it. Right now that I grok the red coats, right that I see what it's up to, I realize ignore the centrals, throw away all my central beating stuff, right. All I have to do is threaten the remote, so that and on any given turn I can run the remote and score, and then just wait. He's going to have to at some point install and advance an agenda in the remote, and if I can get into the remote that turn twice because Ash is there, then. Um, I can take that agenda, and then I just have to set it up again, um, and you know, continue. And red coats will have no, no options, right? He'll sit there until he's he's decked, or install agendas and let me take them, or you know, I don't know what he'll do. 
Um, so yeah, there's your, your red coats demo and there's me getting my ass kicked.